Money. I know one thing's for sure, I never have enough of it. Especially when I'm trying to build cool rock crawler projects and just buy simple lower control arm brackets like this. That's why I learned how to design on Fusion 360 and I'm going to show you the basics today. What's up guys, this is Dylan with BreakingBolts.com. I'm the owner and editor. Please go check out my website. I cover all things off-road, rock crawling, Jeep, Toyotas. If there's something you like, you'll probably find it on there. Growing up, I loved to make things, but I never had the tools to do it. That's why I finally learned how to design on Fusion 360, and it's important you learn how to design as well. If you're just trying to build lower control arm brackets, a truss for your axle, some shock towers, a custom front bumper for your Jeep, or maybe you just need a simple fire pit for your backyard. Let's go ahead and jump into Fusion 360 right now. The best part about Fusion 360 is it's totally free. You can go to the AutoCAD website right now and download it for personal use. You will lose a couple features with the personal use license, but you won't need them just starting out. We're going to build two things today. One is a base plate for a roll cage, and the second thing is a clevis mount for a recovery point. Overall, these will make you familiar with the software and how to get started with building whatever you want. All right, now that we're in the computer and you have AutoCAD Fusion 360 downloaded, this is probably what your screen is going to look like. Now the screen will probably be a bit confusing. There's a lot of things you've never seen before. Like in the top left, you have all of these different settings here that you need to learn about. With time, you'll learn how to use all of these. In this video, we're gonna keep it very simple and I'm gonna walk you through how to build your first part without any fluff. So let's get right into it. The very first thing you wanna do when you get to this screen is go to your top right, select preferences, and you have this screen pop up right here. On the first screen here, in preferences controlling general UI behavior, you wanna come down to the fifth or sixth from the bottom where it says pan, zoom, orbits, shortcuts. I like to use a setting Tinkercad and that'll give you some more control over the software when trying to move around your parts when building. Select Tinkercad then go back over to this left side panel. On this left side panel you'll find a tab called default units. Select design and there's only one setting in this screen. It says default units for new design. This is going to be your selection depending on what you're most familiar with. I'm in the United States, so I select inches. That makes it easy for me, even though I, I am familiar with millimeters. If you're overseas, you, you, you probably are more familiar with millimeters, so you can select that setting. If you're in the United States, you'll probably be most comfortable with inches. Press apply, okay. Now we're ready to start our first design. All right, let's begin our design. Go to the top left and click Create Sketch. You'll see these three axes here. The best axis when beginning is the X, Y axis on the bottom. You can see it here. Once you're in the X, Y axis, you wanna go up to the top and select two point rectangle. You'll see a screen pop up on the right. You wanna select center rectangle. Click on the middle here with a basic square and we can set our dimensions from here. So let's use a four tab four square and you should end up something just like this. For me when designing all of these extra lines get in the way from what I can see. <clears throat> when I'm designing parts I don't like these construction lines that are added when I make shapes so I like to delete them. If you'd like to do the same you can come up to here trim and then delete each of these construction lines in the middle. We are building a roll cage base plate now. So for this example, we can add a circle in the middle to represent our tube. You can, you can select center diameter circle, come to the middle of your square, make a small circle, and then we can type 1.5. And we, we can say our tubing diameter is one and a half inches. We will, we're gonna, we are gonna remove this circle in the end, but for now we can use it as a repre representation of where the tube would sit. Let's come back up to the top and select two point rectangle. Again on this right side screen, select center rectangle. Come to the middle of your design, make a small square, 
and then we can type in our, our dimensions. So let's say the bolt pattern we want for this base plate is two and a half by two and a half. So select 2.5 tab 2.5. Now you can see the corners of this new square are going to be where the holes will sit on the base plate. Select enter. And again, I'm going to delete these construction lines that are added. They're not needed for, for this design. Come back up to the top and select center diameter circle. Come to the corner of the new square. And we're going to say our holes for the base plate are half inch. So you can press 0.5. But hold on. If you're using a plasma cutter, a CNC plasma cutter is not dimensionally accurate when cutting shapes especially when you cut circles. They like to leave a bevel and then you will have to ream it out once you have the part cut. So in order to save time in post-processing, we can go ahead and add five thousandths of an inch to this bolt hole to make up for the bevel that will be left by the plasma cutter. So let's make the circle 0.55. Enter. And then we can go ahead and repeat this process for each corner of the new square in the middle. Now your roll cage base plate is almost complete. So let's go ahead and delete some of these lines we created as a guide. Come up to the top and select trim. You can zoom into the middle of the circle and delete these lines here. You can go ahead and delete your tube guide here. Delete these lines. These and these. Now we have our rough design of our base plate. From here you can go ahead and cut this part if you're happy with it but if you want to see it in 3D come up to the top and select this setting select come into our shape where it's highlighted right click press extrude and now we can extrude our part in three dimensions. So let's say our material thickness is quarter inch 0.250 now you can see your roll cage base plate in three dimensions it's not required but it's good when in a, when in a design phase now the question is how do I take this 3d design and move it over to my CNC plasma cutter or send it to a friend to have it plasma cut press P on your keyboard Select our part where it's highlighted, click, press P again, select your part, and over here on the right side, press OK. Now this will create a new sketch of the part you just made, and you can press Finish Sketch. Come over to this left side, open up the Sketches tab, and select Sketch 2. Right click on set Sketch 2, and press Save as DXF. A DXF file is a file you can use for a CNC plasma cutter or any other CNC process you want to have this part cut with. Save the file and voila, you have your roll cage base plate complete. Now let's move on to our clevis recovery point. Open a new design, come back up to the top and press create sketch. Use the X, Y axis. Use the rectangle press center rectangle come to the center of the design make a small rectangle and let's say the length of our recovery point is three and a half inches and the th the width of it is two inches press enter again I'm gonna delete these construction lines in the middle just to make it a little bit easier and simpler and in theory this recovery point is gonna go on a tube chassis so we need to cope it to the tube diameter of the tube chassis so let's use center diameter circle Come to the end of the design here, into the middle where this line is. You also see an arrow to indicate that this is the center of the design. Make a small circle, and we're going to say this tube chassis is one and a half inches. Press enter, use the trim, cut the sides off here, and then cut the center off here. And now when this part is cut on the CNC plasma cutter, it will already be coped to that one and a half inch tube making it super simple for you. Now, most clevis recovery points, the ones that are used in rock crawling and off-road, have a one-inch pin that goes into them. So let's use a line 
come to the other side of the design and space it one inch from the end of the design. This is going to tell us where we're going to put our, put our bolt hole for this recovery point. Press enter. Now use another circle, come to the end of this line, and let's make the circle 1.05, adding that 5 thousandths of an inch for the accuracy discrepancy of the CNC plasma cutter. Press enter, and then we can trim off this line we used as a guide. Now the reason I spaced it one inch from the end of our design using a one inch bolt hole is because now every point is going to be the same distance. So if you're using a half inch material thickness for this recovery point, you're going to have 0.475 all the way around in material thickness for this bolt hole. All right, so this design is a bit simple and we need to add a little bit of flair to it. Let's make it look a little bit more like a, re a traditional recovery point you can see on any other builder website. So press select, come to the center of the design where it's highlighted, and then right click and extrude. And again, we're gonna use a half inch material thickness. So let's put in 0.5, and now we have our half inch recovery point here. <clears throat> Again, we want to add a little bit of flair. So I'm going to show you guys how to fillet the ends of this. We're going to fillet the ends of this part. So come back up to the top. There's a tab that says modify. Come down to fillet. Select it. And then let's select both of the corners of this design. And we're going to pull these in half of an inch. Let's also go ahead and add a chamfer to the sides here. Come back over to modify, select chamfer, and then select both of these corners and we're going to pull it in about, about 10 thousandths of an inch. Just add a little bit of dimension to the sides of there. And then here we go. You guys have your recovery point for your tube chassis.